Nigeria, and many of Chinua Achebe's books are about them. He wants to revive a strong sense of Igbo identity by reminding them of the time before British rule. This lecture means so much to you and so much to us that it's going to make us able to overcome the miseducation that we received under colonial rule. And I want us to celebrate our lives. So you have a responsibility to make your story known. Achebe talked about culture, but his audience seems to have picked up strong political connotations. It's really wonderful. It has touched the life of the Igbo man. As a matter of fact, what he's talking about is that coming together of the Igbo man, we speak with one voice. You can see how everybody gathered just because of one person. It speaks about greatness. The Igbo as a nation must have to work together as a people towards actualizing that their struggle for self-liberalization, which is what Chino Achebe stands for. Igbo people have felt marginalized ever since they tried to declare independence from Nigeria in 1968. The resulting three-year civil war cost up to a million lives, mostly Igbos. So could a revival of Igbo self-confidence now be exploited by extremists? So I want you to tell them something. Encourage when Achebe calls an impromptu press conference, I have a chance to put this to him. It's 40 years since the horrible civil war. Is there a danger that you, you might get sucked into supporting a, a political agenda which, where you want to support a cultural agenda? Um, not likely. I simply need to tell the story of Nigeria as I see it. Uh, so the question of uh, being pushed into extre extremism does not apply to me. I am very conscious of that danger. He opposes ethnic nationalism, and instead he calls on Nigerians to discover positive values from their own pre-colonial culture that could reinvigorate politics today. As an example, he points out that his own Igbo people had a form of accountable, democratic government that the British swept away. This is the house near his birthplace Chinua Achebe says he would like to live in. But that's not possible until it has been reconstructed to accommodate his disability, allowing him to stay permanently in Nigeria. So during this visit, he's been staying at a government guest house. He's invited me to dinner with his wife, son, and daughter before he leaves the country. This is called Oma. It's a Oma. Yes, it's a... The children have grown up in America. Wanda remembers how her father's storytelling helped a Nigerian girl in a strange land through a difficult time. When I was little, when we were in the US, I didn't like to go to school. You're talking about the early, early 70s, and you know, the. It, it was a racist school, and all I knew at that point was that I didn't like the way that the kids were treating me, so I didn't want to go. And we made a pact that he would tell me a story on the way to school and on the way back. That's how he got me to go to school. Wandu, now a history professor, types up his handwritten manuscripts. And her father hasn't stopped writing. He's currently completing a book of autobiographical essays. I have kept the faith. Uh, the faith of writing and that um, hard as it is, I think that's um, something I, I'm happy about. Achebe says he's been away too long. He admits that America, where he's been living, does not inspire him. He compares America to a small field, in contrast to Nigeria's vast farm of stories to be told. Its very problems are his inspiration. So had he been able to stay in Nigeria, 
What more might Chinua Achebe have achieved? <laughs>